God proclaims freedom to the captives and brings forth water in the wilderness. A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices. God walks with us in the shadow of our fear and shows us new paths of righteousness. A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices. Jesus is born of a woman and comes to earth as Emmanuel, God with us. A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices. Jesus calls out to all who are weary to come to him. He will give us rest. A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices. The Spirit intercedes with our hurting hearts with sighs too deep for words. A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices. The Spirit unites our praise and prayers across the miles and builds us into the faithful, bold, and serving body of Christ. A thrill of hope, a weary world rejoices. We gather for worship in the name of God, our Holy Parent, Jesus, Son of God among us, and the Holy Spirit, Comforter of us all. Amen. The grace for Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O holy God, the coming of your Son into our world has graced weary hearts with peace and hope. Call us together from all places and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In creating, God designs for people, creatures, plants, and the earth to live in harmony. Humanity's connection to creation has many implications. One is that the earth groans under the strain of humanity's greed when we live out of balance with the rest of creation. Another is the seasons called to intentional living and reminding us of the cycle of death and new life that is each year. This Christmas and winter, we remember that we are of the earth and that our lives are bound to creation itself. We hope for the healing of creation with creation. A reading from Genesis. On the day the Lord God made earth and sky, before any wild plants appeared on the earth, and before any field crops grew, because the Lord God hadn't yet sent rain on the earth, and there was still no human being to farm the fertile land. Though a stream rose from the earth and watered all of the fertile land, the Lord God formed the human from the topsoil of the fertile land and blew life's breath into his nostrils. The human came to life. The Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and put there the human that had been formed. In the fertile land, the, God, the Lord God grew every beautiful tree with edible fruit and also grew the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The second lesson is from Genesis, chapter 21, verses 8 through 21. Hagar was an outcast in every way possible at the time she lived. She was a woman. She was enslaved by Abraham and Sarah, and she was not from their country. Rather than trusting God's promises, Sarah and Abraham abuse Hagar through a pregnancy that she could not consent to. We now read Sarah's contempt for Hagar and her son Ishmael. Yet God continues to see Hagar and her son and provides for them in the wilderness. Hagar's story gives hope to all those who are outcasts today. God sees them and God attends to their needs. Likewise, Hagar shows us that God does hear our individual prayers as well. God sees you, and God attends to your needs. A reading from Genesis. Isaac grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, Ishmael, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bowshot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. As she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid. For God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
abide by imperial command, Mary and Joseph traveled 90 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem, the ancestral home of Joseph's family. This trip likely took about one month because they were walking, walking. Mary was walking 90 miles while eight months pregnant. Hopefully, she really did have a donkey to ride on, like in so many of the Christmas images. The weariness of travel must have been exhausting in body, mind, soul, and spirit. So many of us are weary in body, mind, soul, and spirit. So many of us carry trauma in our bodies. We carry illness, injury, grief, and pain. We also carry new life and hope. God accompanying us, us on all our journeys, helping us to carry all that weighs us down, just as Mary carried in her body the holy presence of God with us. A reading from Luke. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken by Quirinius, was governor of Syria. All went out in their towns to be registered. Joseph also went out to the town of Nazareth of Galilee, to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and to whom he was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the end. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Family, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus faced violence and persecution as King Herod reacted to Jesus' birth with fear and fury and sought to destroy Jesus. Fleeing the terror of Herod's massacre of the innocents, the Holy Family lived as refugees in Egypt. People all over the world still face violence, persecution, fear, and terror every day. Many make the hard choice to flee and seek refuge elsewhere. Just as God cared for the Holy Family through the people of Egypt, God continues to care through those who still provide refuge for those who must flee their homes. A reading from Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea. For so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Now, after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child, to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Throughout his life and ministry, Jesus eats with and feeds thousands. Yet this seaside fish breakfast following his resurrection is a meal like no other. Jesus comes to the disciples who are weary with grief and uncertain of what is to come. They eat, and then Jesus gives Peter the command to love and feed his sheep. Likewise, we come weary with grief and uncertainty to Christ's table, to God's holy word. Jesus nourishes us with his word and himself when we share communion. We may not know what the next chapter of faith looks like for us as individuals or us together as a church, but we trust that God is with us and God will show us the way. A reading from John. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew that it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread again and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God.
Isaiah speaks words of hope to the people of Israel who are living as exiles in Babylon. The prophet describes the return from the Babylonian captivity as a joyous procession to Zion. There is no fear. God is coming to save. God's coming reign brings hope, not just for humanity, but also for creation. All earth is hopeful. God renews creation. The desert will flow with water. The land will rejoice with blossoms. God's recreation is hope for the restoration of humanity, creatures, and all of creation. A reading from Isaiah. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. It shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear, here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunted jackal shall become a swamp, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. In sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us express our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Joining our voices with the heavenly host and Christians throughout time and space, let us pray for the church, the world, 
and all in need. You come to us in gatherings of your church across the globe. Unite us with those who celebrate your birth, even when they are weary and weighed down by grief, loss, poverty, hunger, or injustice. Merciful God, fill us with your hope. You come to us in the diverse splendor of the universe. Grant us the humility to trust our place in the network of creation that we live in service to you and the natural world. Show us ways to restore creation where it is worn and weary. Merciful God, fill us with your hope. You come to us through relationships of many kinds, families, friendships, communities, and nations. Guide us in these relationships that we recognize the Christ child in one another and show your love to those most vulnerable. Merciful God, fill us with your hope. You come to us through people whom the world forgets, women and others who have been cast out, refugees, and creation itself. Send your spirit to all who are imprisoned, struggling with addiction, unwell, or in any need this day, especially those we name aloud in the comments or in the silence of our hearts. Merciful God, fill us with your hope. You come to us in acts of justice and forgiveness. Open our hearts to forgive one another without permitting injustice. Supply us with the wisdom to be clothed with love, binding all things together in perfect harmony. Merciful God, fill us with your hope. You come to us in the Virginia Synod, to our congregations, campus ministries, mission starts, and explorations. Rekindle your joy in the hearts of all who join in these communities. We pray your blessing for our Global Companion Synod, New Guinea Islands District, Evangelical Lutheran Church in Papua New Guinea. Merciful God, fill us with your hope. You come to us through those who have died yet live with you forever. And we give you thanks for all who have told the story of your love. Merciful God, fill us with your hope. Rejoicing in your word made flesh among us, we commend these prayers to you, confident of your grace and hope made known to us in Jesus Christ our Savior. And together we say, Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray our offering prayer. Let us pray. God of hope, we give you thanks for all the offerings that the people of the Virginia Synod have shared during the Advent season and will continue to share during the Christmas season. Each gift, each act of generosity, each act of service, whether to a local congregation, to organizations like Lutheran Disaster Response and other organizations, or to support the shared ministry of the Virginia Synod through mission support, are beacons of hope in a weary world. As we offer ourselves and these your gifts, sustain us through the proclamation of your word and renew in us the song of your salvation. 
in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now receive this blessing. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ the Word made flesh. Amen. Now go in peace. <laughs> Rejoice in Christ our Savior. Thanks be to God.